Hi, Internet. Hello. How are you today? Are you happy and healthy? I hope you are. I personally am healthy. I am good. Physically, I still have a job. I'm still getting paid throughout this crisis, so I don't have to worry about if I'll be able to pay rent. But man, do I worry about everybody who does have to worry about such things. I... This whole crisis is a little bit stressful for me. I can't not watch the news and everything is making me upset. But also, when I was in college, I was assigned to read this horror novel, The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism by Bernie bro, Naomi Klein. And oh my goodness, it's about how whenever there's this big disaster that goes on, there's a chance for society to become like completely restructured. And it's not often restructured in a way that's helpful for the proletariat long term. But during these times, the proletariat, it's not like they're gonna rise up and protest or whatever the fuck because they're all worried about surviving the crisis at hand. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. I'm just communicating to you guys that I am a, a, a little bit stressed out. And I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you guys all stressed out too. I started reading this book. I'm one chapter into There There. I felt like the epigraph at the beginning of the book, it was very, um, it was very spot on for this moment in time that we are in. In the dark times, will there also be singing? Yes, there will also be singing about the dark times. I found myself really enjoying a lot of COVID-19 parody songs. Is this a fever? Is this just allergies? Caught in a lockdown, no escape from the family. One day home. One more day's home education. Let's just let them run amok. We're not ready for these schoolboys, cause they just don't One care day about the One day more, one day more, see I'm on his side, clapping for the NHS to make them cry. This guy, Chris Mann. Hello from Corona. He needs to make a COVID-19 album from all of his parody songs. They're just top notch. They say the cure is up to you me. It's called a sick day. So bid you best day. Oh. As we're social distancing, as we're isolating ourselves and hopefully keeping ourselves safe, we can feel very alone and powerless. So it feels more comforting to reach out to people or even to know that other people are in the same headspace as us. They're in the same predicament as us. And now getting into the what the fuck down. Is this show supposed to be pronounced like what the fuck? Is there like a different Belgian pronunciation? You guys let me know. But anyway, like five minutes ago or like five days ago, I made a video about Scum Espana. Their season four has been postponed, understandably because of COVID-19. They have to do the social distancing, can't really film right now while they're in quarantine. But I was like, you know, one way that you can film while you're in quarantine is through FaceTime. Modern Family had a great FaceTime episode, but lo and behold, what the fuck was already doing what I said that Scum Espana should be doing. So I thought, okay, I'll just, I'll just watch this then. Oh, and I just wanna say, I'm gonna try my very best with name pronunciations. If I mispronounce anybody's name, you can just write in the comments, help me out. That would be fantastic. So Yana is set to move to New York City. Her mom got a new job at the UN. I don't approve, that is not a good idea. And that's just not good parenting to move your child to New York City at this point in time. I know that Yana is upset because she has friends. That's a pretty big deal to go from living in Belgium to then moving to America. Completely different country, different language. But also New York City is like one of the last places on earth that I would ever want to move to during this crisis, oh my God. I live in California, right? I live in a state that's inhabited by 40 million people. Fewer people have died of COVID-19 in my entire state than have died in New York City, not the state, in the city. 
of COVID-19. It's one hell of a hot spot that's just so dangerous. It's not good news. And then on top of that, some people on cable news think that the idea of having Medicare for all is completely wild. The pandemic is super bad in New York City. Who knows how good her health insurance is gonna be. If she goes to university in the fall and she wouldn't have lived in New York City long enough to be a resident of New York City. State. If you're a resident of New York State and you go to university in New York, then tuition for university is relatively cheaper than if you were an out-of-state student. But if you're an international student, no. Mm -mm. Super expensive. Tuition is so expensive. And you're not even allowed to get financial aid if you're an international student. You have to pay the full price and it is fucking expensive like no girl just stay where you are yana you need to do your research you need to make the case of why you should not move to new york city that's just a bad decision on your mom's part sonder likes to go out on walks likes to videotape his walks i did that for a hot minute but this one time Guys, I was on a walk, okay? I was practicing my social distancing. Unfortunately, not everybody on the street wants to practice their social distancing from me. It's so annoying. Every time like I walk in a direction, I see other people like right ahead of me. I turn, I do not walk towards these fucking people. And it's just very stressful because when you're outside, it's not a controlled environment. This one time I was just like walking along and then I hear somebody cough right next to me. I turn around. This guy is not six feet away from me. He's on his bicycle. He was like right behind me. And I was like, it's basically attempted murder. I could have gotten sick from that. I was so mad. That's why I'm mainly staying in my apartment all day, every day. I do not trust other people. I do not want to go outside. No, thank you. Not for me. Anyway, Sonder, he also wants to have cyber sex with, um, God, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Rob Robbie? That one's a struggle for me. But anyway, um, I take it that they're both 18, correct? The age of consent is 16 in Belgium. Belgians, please let me know if this is the case. So as an adult, you can have sex with a 16 year old. That's fine, that's legal, it's whatever. But if you possess a naked picture of that same 16 year old, say on your phone or whatever, would that be considered child pornography? I know that in Norway, the age of consent is 16, but also when Nora was confronting Nico, the legal issue that she brought up wasn't that, hey, you took a picture of me while I was passed out without my consent, and now you're threatening to distribute that picture without my consent. The legal issue that she brought up was that's child pornography because I'm under the age of 18, therefore a child, but she was over the age of consent. You guys can fill me in on the legality of that. I mentioned before that when I watch the scum remakes, I sometimes watch through the lens of like, which scum remake is gonna make the best sauna season. So sauna and Yusuf, it really, really bothered me that they only had three different conversations and how so much Asana season was really about Nora and I really hated the Nora, Asana, and Yusuf love triangle and they might possibly go in the same direction. It looks like Senna and Zoe aren't getting together anytime soon though I do like that there's not a bunch of secrecy around Senna having a girlfriend because I remember with William he had the girlfriend or at least we heard about him having a girlfriend. Who knows maybe that was just a rumor that was unsubstantiated. I don't know, they never talked about it really. But yeah, when I watched season three and I saw that they broke up, I was like, fuck, because then they might end up doing the love triangle and I hate the love triangle with a white hot passion. But also in addition to that, I wondered if the reason why we didn't see a lot of Sana and Yusuf interacting together and like 
developing their relationship and getting to know each other better was because maybe Yuliandam didn't know how to write a love story that's not super physical because Norhelm was a very physical relationship. And you can also say the same for Isak and Evan, but I did like that they actually talked to each other. So their relationship wasn't built purely around sex, but with Sander and Rabe, their relationship was more physical than Isak and Evans. And out of all of the Evans, I felt like Sonder was the one that I knew the least. That makes me a little bit worried when it comes to Belgian Yusuf. Are we actually gonna develop him and get to know him a lot better than we got to know the original Yusuf, but also more than we got to know Sonder? I, I don't know. I do like that she's about to tell Robbie about Belgian Yusuf. I wanna hear more about him. I would be so excited if we got to see face time conversation between the two of them. But also with Sander, I need to know more about him because I'd say that my favorite Isak seasons of the remakes were Scum Espana and Druk because you got to know the Evan characters on their own terms. They were given multiple opportunities to talk about themselves or to talk about their past. Way, way back when episode seven aired of Druk, I said, oh, they're definitely gonna kill it when it comes to a Mira season. And one of the reasons for that was instead of doing like a sex scene at the end of episode seven, they just had a hug and then the characters had a conversation. I was like, yes, because they can show that these two characters, they really care about each other. They have very strong feelings for each other without focusing a ton on the sex, just focusing more on having the characters get to know each other, having them talk to each other. So then I thought, yeah, they'll do a really good job with Amira and German Yusuf because then we'll see more scenes hopefully of them talking and even if there is no kiss it will still be good to watch. But anyway I don't know how many episodes we're gonna get from the what the fuck down but I do hope that at some point in time we'll hear more about Sonder and his mental illness. I know that for a lot of us um, this COVID-19 any mental illness that you have like it's just amplified everything so um Maybe we can hear about that. Maybe we can hear about how he was diagnosed in the first place. I just like an opportunity to get to know him a bit better. I want to know what do you think? Do you like What the Fuck Down? Oh, and what other things have you been watching or listening to or anything coronavirus related or not coronavirus related? So I'll talk to you later. Um, bye.